What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So this will be a spoiler free review for Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, which is a prequel to the 2019 remake, not the film that we got back in the 80s. This is a prequel to the most recent adaptation that we got in 2019. Uh, it again is, of course, based off of Stephen King's iconic novel, Pet Cemetery. This is directed and written by Lindsay Anderson Beer. It's also co-written by Jeff Bueller. It is starring Jackson White, Forrest Goodluck, Jack Mullern, Henry Thomas, Natalie Lind, uh, Samantha Mathis, and a few other people. This is revolving around Judd Crandall, who we know is one of the most prominent characters known from the Pet Cemetery lore, the Pet Cemetery book, and the two adaptations that we've gotten. Uh, set in 1969, 50 years before the events of the previous film, the plot follows a young Judd Crandall as he discovers a local cemetery where the dead can live again without imagining the horror that will affect his life. Now, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines, it is unfortunately one of those prequels that justifies the argument of prequels being unnecessary. Sometimes prequels aren't better, no pun intended. The problem, especially if you're someone like me who is familiar with Timmy Baderman and his backstory, is it doesn't help when this film solves its own mystery in the opening and then wants you to sit around waiting for all of these other characters to catch up. Something's wrong with Timmy and our characters slowly learn this, but there's no suspense around this topic. It's just frustration and impatience that's swelling because I already know what's wrong with Timmy and I'm growing impatient with these one dimensional characters trying to catch up with me. Any effort to bulk up your mystery is falling on deaf ears when you're placing your audience 10 steps ahead of your characters, making the characters absolutely dull and centering it on a character like Judd, who I know will survive because if he doesn't, you have a giant plot hole on your hands. So the story is written in a way that's forcing itself to take losses as it's progressing. The lore surrounding the cemetery is explored further through flashbacks and exposition dumping, which also made no impact given the film failed to justify its own existence within five minutes. It also seemed to be undoing any type of Wendigo connection fans would expect, which felt like an odd writing choice. Judd Crandall, again, being our main protagonist, our main character, he's hoping to leave Ludlow with his girlfriend and join the Peace Corps. He's just ready to get life started. And that's about all we get from his character. We know he's going to survive, of course, since he's in the sequel to this. We do also, of course, find out that he used to be close friends with a other, another young man named Manny, along with Timmy before World War II. For those of you who know Timmy Baderman's story, I'm just trying again not to get into too many spoilers. Problem is, again, with the concept is that Lindsay Bear's screenplay offers little reason to remotely care about Judd, Manny, and we sure are not going to care about Timmy. Manny and Timmy have qualities about them that can make them relatable, but they just aren't since the story keeps them one dimensional. Timmy being a participant in World War II should have led to a compelling story, but no, he's more like a poor attempt at capturing Timmy Baderman. To be honest, nothing about him made me think that this was someone possessed by a Wendigo spirit. It was more like a boy who just got up on the wrong side of the bed or someone who has severe depression or maybe just has a maybe just has something stuck up his ass. I don't know. He just seemed like he was in a bad mood or suffering from severe depression. Manny is mad that his friends left him in Ludlow and his sister is about to do the same thing. So, like, that's all we learned about Manny. I want to feel sorry for this guy. Because he has no direction in life, that's made apparent. But not enough is done with this material to warrant my investment. As a protagonist, Judd also isn't unlikable. He's just undercooked and barely relevant despite being the main character. He's here, but most of the material that is semi-compelling, it's coming from his father, played by the talented Henry Thomas. Check him out in Mike Flanagan's latest miniseries when it drops next month. The dialogue mostly consists of cryptic wordplay that comes off more ironic than anything when you hear this line over and over again. The line sometimes dead is better. The irony being that this concept should have stayed dead or at least trapped in development purgatory. There's a line that sums up my entire feelings about this movie because it all seemed like 80 minutes of a duh moment. So a character literally says, this world is old and filled with good stuff and bad stuff and we don't know where it comes from. And I'm sitting there like, are, are we serious right now? Because the delivery of the line is laughable because it's delivered in a breaking news sort of way. But most people already know this as a harsh reality about any aspect of life. 
The kills are very quick and uneventful, and the best gore sequence by far comes from someone's flesh falling off their foot. The themes of generational trauma are apparent, but they're barely explored in any sort of profound way for me to care about any of these people or their reasoning for staying in Ludlow. Pacing wasn't that great while I was watching some stuff. It went on for far too long and other encounters that could have been used to sub to build suspense and savor whatever was lacking overly watching this movie it has really no terror to it whatsoever and a lot of the scares do come from jump scares admittedly some of them aren't as formulaic as what i've been seeing in past projects like the nun and the nun 2 they're just the the suspense the efforts to build suspense in the pacing it's it's terrible they're all just done they're all just done in the blink of an eye if you blink you'll miss it there's just a very bland and generic atmosphere to the whole project that 2019 prequel it's not perfect, but it's a superior adaptation compared to this for sure. Acting wise, Henry Thomas and N Natalie Lynn, they're my standouts. We don't even learn that much about his girlfriend who was portrayed by Natalie Lynn. Uh, she's, again, just someone who's there for the ride. When you have characters who are undercooked like this and a lot of their personalities are coming off dry from the performances... You're not going to be invested in anything happening on your screen. <laughs> That's what's happening with this film. Jackson White's performance here made it difficult to connect with Judd. Honestly, Judd's worst actor sadly goes to his youngest depiction, youngest depiction to date. I think this mostly just spoke to also how poorly directed this film was at times because he's apparently a great actor or so I've heard because this was the first thing I've seen from him and it was quite bad. When he's delivering his lines, there's nothing that's changing in his tone, given no matter the context. The, the tone is the same. And it's like, bro, are you are you OK? But again, I'm not really going to knock him because I haven't seen too much from him. All in all, this is a prequel that you could have just kept in the drafts. We didn't need this. Not at all. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 10. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can this video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies and news or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.